Hello viewers and welcome again to Discovering Truth and I am Pastor Forbes of The Gateway Abiding Word Ministries here in the Gambia. Happy New Year to us all. This is 2023 and by the good grace of God this is our first telecast for this year. We are trusting God for another 52 more to finish this beautiful year. It is a year full of promise and hope. I think globally a lot of people are excited because we feel and sense that we've weathered probably the worst of a two, three year period of all kinds of challenges globally, continentally, regionally, and nationally. Now, of course, nationally always means back to the individual and the family level. But God in his goodness and mercy who preserved us from early 2020 into 2021 into 2022, I feel is bringing us out and making us exhale and recalibrate, reset, realign, reconfigure, reconstruct, and come back not just to where we were post-2020, but even sending us further with confidence, determination, boldness, and heightened levels of expectation for what we can do. It is a truth that when you are thrown down against all odds and you come up again, you come up with, and permit the phrase, you come up with the word, you come up with a vengeance, you come back ready to fight and to push. And so I trust that that is the ethos, that is the pathos, that is the energy and the character and the resolve that we all have for this year, 2023. Of course, it's good for that to happen because that's where you start. Without resolve, without energy and determination, without a desire to change, nothing happens. Resignation, escapism, throwing your arms up in the air, blaming everything else will never work. We always have to rise up, chest out, and start making bold decisions and, of course, taking corresponding actions to those bold decisions. The truth about a lot of things that happen globally and narrowing it down to your life and our lives is that every time there is a setback, there is an equal possibility and opportunity for an advancement. Every time there is a failure, there is every possibility within that event or circumstance or situation for there to be a success, a victory, a triumph. Every time there is a loss, there is within that setting, circumstance, situation, scenario of such a loss for there to be a gain, an advancement, a win. Sometimes, not always, but oftentimes, more often than not, the decider, the deciding factor or the game changer is my ability, your ability to see beyond the immediateness of the pain, the suffering, the loss, the purported bankruptcy, the failure to galvanize ourselves with a resolve that I can turn this around. There is a verse in the Bible in the book of Psalms, P-S-A-L-M-S, the Psalms, and it is Psalm 84. There are 150 of them. It's like 150 poems or books put into a compendium and they're called the Psalms. And if you have a Bible and you look for one, chances are if you open it, the middle would be Psalms. And in Psalms 84, 
in verse 6, something like this is written. I'm paraphrasing it. Blessed are those who through, who going through the valley of Baca, the valley of pain, the valley of shame, the valley of bitterness, the valley, a low period, a low place in their life, are able, have the ability, develop the resolve and the determination to transform it, to exchange it into a wellspring of life, into an oasis of life. Blessed are those, blessed, to be blessed means to be empowered to advance, to be empowered to progress, to be empowered to prosper. It means there is an ability that is imparted into us by Almighty God that gives us this knowing and confidence and assurance that this is not the end. It cannot end like this. This is not the final word. This is not the final say. This no can be changed to yes. This down can be transformed to an up. This low can be transformed into a high. This failure can be turned around into a success. And so God spoke in the heart of David Dauda and he, he penned it down. You are blessed when as going through the valley of Baca, ladies and gentlemen, even if we don't know what Baca means, we know a valley. A valley is that place between two mountains. A valley is low. A valley is disadvantaged. You cannot fight somebody who is at the mountain when you are at the valley. Chances are you are going to lose because everything you do is going against gravity and everything they do, gravity is helping them. So it says, blessed is that person. That person is empowered by divine ability and grace and favor and mercy and goodness, divine resolve to look at this valley of Baca situation, this brokenness, this failure, this loss, this consistent, repetitive failure and always almost getting there but missing it scenario in life and has something in them, the very least, being their desire to transform it into a wellspring of life. Putting it in another way, the soonest we begin to look at life from the half-filled glass position rather than the half-empty glass position, the more poised we are to transform what we see. There is another scripture in the Bible. It's in the book of Proverbs. I can't readily recall it, but it goes something like this. The poor man and the wise man or the criminal and the rich man have something in common. The Lord has given them both eyes. So what is the decider? It's not just what they see, it is how they see what they're looking at. So back to my beginning statement. Whenever there is a loss, a failure, a near miss, a bankruptcy, a defeat, inside the mechanics and the dynamics of such a situation, circumstance or scenario, if we look well, if we decipher well, if we discern well, if we take time to do critical analysis of the situation, there was a point in that situation where it could have turned around. Always. Always. And I say this, ladies and gentlemen, as the foundation, as the introduction to this series I promised you last year, December, that we're going to start entitled Getting It Right in the Gambia. How can we get it right in this nation? 
And I'm sure somebody will say, Pastor Forbes, that's such an audacious statement because it presumes that you are assuming that we are not getting it right. Well, maybe for your sake I'll say how to get it better. Maybe that will help you. But the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, after 65 years of nationhood, and sometimes looking at the what we call the First Republic and the 22-year period after July 1994 to the last six years. Truthfully, are we better? Are we better off? In every sector of life, the challenges, the dysfunctions, the strikes, the strange security scenario behavior that we are suddenly seeing, are those signs of a nation getting it right? Are they just signs of people trying to grind the system to a halt? Or are they signs of an agitation that is indicative of something that is simmering? How do we get it right? My dear friends, anytime Let me just use this example. Let's say every time somebody tried to do something and at the very end, they failed. The next time they try to do something and everything tells you that they are going to succeed, they fail again. The third time, maybe they're even coached and encouraged and literally things are brought to them on a silver or gold platter. And you rest assured in your mind that they're going to succeed. They fail again. And keep failing. And keep having near misses. And keep having everything around them so good. And sometimes they have the advantage of age of size, of height, of community goodwill, of regional goodwill, continental, global goodwill. They have mentors. They have uh, people who will help them. They have coaches. They have letters of recommendation. They have people who speak well of them. But at the dying second of victory, they lose. Whenever you see that, I will humbly but boldly posit that something is critically wrong. For example, let's let me use another example. Let me take basketball, or maybe soccer. We, are, we like soccer alone, football. If there are 11 players by name, 10 and a goalkeeper, and whenever they play together, they lose. Wherever they are, they lose. Even if they play against a side that is less positioned and known to win, they do everything. They probably even start with three goals up. But by the time the final whistle is blowed, blown, they have lost. Some pe people may say, well, it's just luck. No. But if each of these 11 players goes to play 
in 11 other teams. So the goalkeeper is the goalkeeper for a club. The strikers are strikers for other clubs. Each of them, one per club. And in their club, there is victory. Two per club. In their club, there is victory. And they contribute to the victory. Three in a club. And they win. Four of them in a club. And they win. Five of them in a club. And they win. But when they come together as the 11, they keep losing. There is something wrong. A scenario, a scenario where a Gambian can do wonders in another country for a multinational, for a private sector, or even start their own business and excel. But when they come home, it's as if they're restricted. They're capped. They're frustrated. Some go back quickly. Some just sit down and give up. And if there are those who are at the retirement age, they enjoy their pensions quietly and do not get involved in anything. It's like they are standing by, standing by and looking on to this very mind-boggling national scenario yet very fixable, yet easy to turn around. But it always seems to elude us. So in this series, we are going to interrogate as many things that I believe are important. I have no axe to grind. I'm sure you know that. I think after 26 and a half years on TV, you would have found that if I had an axe to grind or not. It's more than a quarter of a century. But I love my country. And I don't see why we should mortgage the destiny of this country into the hands of a few greedy people, selfish people, Wicked people, people who don't love their country and their accomplices. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the thing about truth is that it's painful. But as our Savior and Messiah said, when you know the truth and apply the truth, the truth sets you free. The truth liberates you emancipates you. That's where the name of this program has come from, discovering truth. Because when you discover, you uncover. And you say, ah, now I know. Now wasabi, legi hamnako, nyalung, malung. And then you're on the journey to transformation. For as many of us as have had the opportunity to travel to countries similar to us in size, Botswana, the Bahamas, nations that look like us or that started with us, Singapore. I look at some nations like even Cape Verde down the road there and islands like Mauritius, we have to ask ourselves, what are we not doing right? Why are we not getting it right? Almost every executive summary of a document goes like this. The Gambia is the smallest independent republic in mainline Africa. We are projected 2.4 million people. I am told the mayor of Dakar, a city, the capital city next door, is about 5, 6 million. The mayor of the city. Our 
nation with a president, a speaker, a chief justice, coat of arms, flag, police, military, and the whole works, diplomatic institutions, 2.4 million people. We definitely should get it right. And by the grace of God, we will interact with as many sectors as possible. Because my friends, it's good for us to call ourselves the smiling coast. It's good for us. You know, anybody can do a documentary. I can even try my hand at one and get a drone to take beautiful pictures of the river and the sea when it's blue or green and take a strip of the white sand and some lady dancing in slow motion and somebody turning Churaigerte or Benachin and a great church service and a great mosque service and children running away from school and a few birds here and there, as we see in all the documentaries, not forgetting the crocodile pool and all that. Why does it not transform into national prosperity? We need to ask ourselves questions and prefer solutions together on what we can do to get it right. We cannot be getting it wrong all the time. Recently, somebody lamented and the person's lamentation was visible because my wife and I drove by the area, the Senegambia area, after 31st December and New Year. And that happens literally after every feast. The level of filth. Why? Are we the only country that celebrates this? Why such level of incalculable filth? It's not for the municipalities alone to solve. The question is, how many of us drink water from plastic cups or we have packet juices or we eat ebe in our sitting room, our bedroom, our living room, and we throw it on the floor there? I'm sure nobody does that. And if we do, then therein lies the problem. And that's just one of many that go on and on and on repeatedly without solutions, seemingly. We need to get it right in every sector. The size of our country should make the clearing of containers very fast, should make the acquisition of documents very fast, should make business flow because we are small. Our size should be our advantage and not our disadvantage. Our size should make it possible for every citizen to exhale and do what they should do. And it will be indicative in our GDP. But if it's not, then there is something. And I'm going to stop here because this is the introduction. But let me stop by repeating how I started. Wherever there is a failure, a bankruptcy, a loss, a defeat, or something bad, within that system, setting, scenario, environment, circumstance, situation, there is an equal opportunity for a change. And that is what this series is aimed at doing. How can we get it right? What has been blindsiding us? What is hidden in plain sight? What are we not seeing? So that we see it and start making the changes. Certainly it can be an overnight decision. But once we're in that trajectory, we will start seeing change. Maybe baby step changes. I will see possibilities. Let us not forget that there was a time when you could not find plastics on the floor in this country. 
Maybe the methodology was drastic, but the possibility was there. And that's just one. It could go to many other things. But let me stop here. The year is still young. I'm trusting that we will just push it and push it and push it. And maybe this year, for a change, I might be able to have the opportunity to bring somebody or two people on board from time to time and we discuss possibilities. On that note, until I come your way next week by the special grace of God, have a good day. Happy New Year again. And let this be part of our resolve for 2023 so that the Gambia will get it right because you and I are getting it right. God bless you. Have a good day. Discover.